This phone is everywhere in Africa. It's called Techno. It's made right here in Ethiopia and designed for markets like Ethiopia. But it's actually Chinese. Techno is owned by Trenshin, a Chinese company that's never sold a single phone in China. It's the fourth largest mobile phone maker in the world and the top smartphone maker in Africa. They got so big by making phones that have Chinese components but are designed and assembled here. The phones have features like cameras that calibrate for darker skin, multiple SIM cards, and keyboards in African languages. Do you think it's better than the iPhone? Yeah. Trenshin is an example of a wave of Chinese companies investing in Africa's fast-growing tech market. These companies are bringing together Chinese manufacturing and designs by people who understand their customers. So we are working We're traveling around the world to see how China is changing everything. This week, a story about how one Chinese city is at the center of Ethiopia's burgeoning startup scene. I'm Isabel New reporting for Quartz. This is Because China. Ethiopia has one of the fastest growing economies in the world. A lot of this growth is being fueled by China. It's hard to miss its presence here. Even street vendors speak Mandarin. The Chinese government has invested in large infrastructure projects. Chinese companies are moving factories here, hiring the country's young workforce. 70% of its population of 100 million are under age 30. There's also something really unique happening. Partnerships between Chinese companies and Ethiopian entrepreneurs. When it comes to uh, the, some designs, the hardwares, the, the ones we are using in Ethiopia, you can see that some of them are designed for another world. Kuroi Sagaye is the co-founder of iCog Labs, the first AI and robotics tech startup in Ethiopia. We should have uh, hardware designers in Ethiopia who understand the Ethiopian psyche, who understand the Ethiopian demand, who understand the Ethiopian market. In 2018, ICOG Labs, along with the Ethiopian Ministry of Technology and Innovation, organized the country's first hardware tech innovation contest called Designed in Ethiopia. They wanted to find the best product pitches from all over the country and provide them with resources to go to market. To actually make the products, Hure and his team turned to China for partners, specifically to the Chinese city of Shenzhen. Why do you prefer to work with the Shenzhen makers and companies? You have very experienced hardware engineers there. The price is also affordable for countries like us. Hardware makers in Shenzhen like to brag that they can make electronics for the price of cabbage. This market is part of what makes Shenzhen so appealing to Ethiopian designers. It aligns with Shenzhen's unique open source manufacturing ecosystem. <laughs> Open source usually refers to the sharing of code to develop software. This is the sharing of parts and designs for hardware. Companies come here to buy what they need. The open source culture came out of the era of Shenzhe, or copycat culture. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the small manufacturers that were making electronic parts for multinational corporations like Apple banded together to make knockoff versions of name brand electronics. The Shenzhe era eventually faded as name brand electronics became more affordable to Chinese consumers. But open source manufacturing continued, and Shenzhen started getting recognized by the rest of the world as a hub for hardware innovation. So all of this happened within a very short time span between 2010 and 2015. Sylvia Lintner studies entrepreneurship culture in China. She says Shenzhen offers affordable technology that African tech entrepreneurs can adapt. They um, began turning to Shenzhen as a place where they could actually make the, some of these visions that they had, sort of designing technology very specifically for an African context. They felt like Shenzhen was a good partner in that. Uh, 
David Lee is the founder of Shenzhen Open Innovation Lab, which connects tech entrepreneurs from around the world to Shenzhen's manufacturers. His organization became the Chinese partner for designing Ethiopia, offering mentor trainings and connections with Chinese factories. Li says he's investing in African talents because of what he saw in Shenzhen over the past 30 years. Many international companies saw China only as a factory and not as a resource. Because I'm from Taiwan, Taiwan started in 80s and 90s to invest in foreign companies. Taiwan has a lot of factories, but Taiwan doesn't invest in the people of Taiwan. So today, we can see that the Chinese internet, the BAD, 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 So this this is the final product. The final product. You just product. plug it into a laptop. This USB-like gadget is one of the product designs that emerged from Design to Ethiopia. It's called the FM dongle. You can plug it into a laptop to listen to and record radio programs without Wi-Fi, which is unreliable and expensive in Ethiopia. We won the second place out of 100 teams from all over the country. Yeah. It's the kind of product the contest was created for, one that emerged from an Ethiopian mind with a unique insight into the market here. Since winning the contest, they have made five prototypes. Well, the middle part is the, the electronics uh, PCB board, and that's sourced from uh, China. China, yeah. Yeah, using Alibaba. Alibaba. Yeah. Now they're looking for investment to manufacture the FM dongle with Chinese partners. We assume that this will be the first seeds. In which we can create the ecosystem of the hardware business in Ethiopia. From Shenzhen entrepreneurs' perspective, finding partners in emerging markets makes business sense. Rising labor costs and fierce competition in China are driving many businesses to reach more consumers outside the country. Around 2013 and 14, a lot of people working in that industry felt compelled to change their business. Emerging markets tend to offer lower margins, but Shenzhen companies say they can tolerate that. 真正百分之五十的利润到百分之一的利润的产品都有人在做。那在这个环境底下，我们不会把这个做产品当做是一项慈善的事情。这件事情是有钱大家赚。This kind of partnership is still pretty unusual. China's biggest investments in Ethiopia resemble those in other African countries. They're led by governments and becoming increasingly controversial. Large loans are putting the country in a staggering amount of debt. Many companies that set up factories have been accused of exploitation, environmental violations, and corruption. Partnerships like Hurex might not replace more conventional investment in Ethiopia, but he's optimistic that it gives more Ethiopians a seat at the table. We are moving towards China because China is a better alternative. Then, if they try to cheat us, okay,、uh, we have to fight that. I know. But at least, it's, it's something between partners. This story is a free episode from our member exclusive series, Because China. Click to sign up for a free trial for a Quartz membership. You'll get access to the entire series and the third season, which we're working on right now.